Hi, I'm Mike Gibson coming to you live from Sky 2018 and I'm joined by Sammy Almaraya and Chad Klieger. Talk to us about TAVR and bicuspid aortic valve disease. Sure. Well, this is this is certainly a new uh, and expanding indication for TAVR. As you know, patients with bicuspid aortic valve disease have really been excluded from any of the previous trials. Uh, why is that? Why have we excluded them? Well, the anatomy is much more complex, so there are many more pitfalls in terms of how we're going to manage these patients. The asymmetry of a bicuspid valve, the heavier degree of calcification has posed uh, procedural challenges and it's limited the success historically that we've received with TAB. Having said that, by no means does that mean that it's a contraindication. Certainly there's a lot of data recently that TAVR is safe and feasible in these patients. So is there some first-in-man data that suggests that this is a viable option? So there are a number of, uh, number of registries, observational studies that have looked at uh, in these patients and they're not large numbers. We're talking uh, 600 patient case series that look at this data showing that there is good uh, reasonable safety and efficacy with TAVR in, in this patient population. And how old are these patients? Are they younger than your traditional TAVR patients? Do they have some post uh, aortic aneurysms? So typically uh, we see this in a, in a younger uh, age patient population and, and as we start to do TAVR in the lower risk patients, which most of them are younger patients, uh, we start to see the prevalence actually of bicuspids a, a, a lot more uh, at a lot more prevalence. Yeah. And I will say, so that's a very important point. I mean, as we move into the lower risk patient cohort, we're certainly going to also shift into the younger patients where bicuspid disease is more prevalent. Having said that, there's surgical data that bicuspid aortic valve disease can be seen even as high as 25% in patients in their 70s and 80s. So wow. a lot of the patients that we are treating already do have bicuspid pathology. Is there some randomized trials underway specifically in the bicuspid? patient? Uh, not underway. <laughs> I will say that with some of the upcoming device trials, so for example uh, with the Lotus uh, valve with the Breeze 4, there is going to be a bicuspid arm to try to look at this question in a little bit more of a focused manner because so far it's just been registries. So who's the right patient in 2018? Who's the right patient? Who's the right bicuspid patient for this kind of intervention? So, so right now, um, for bicuspid disease, for TAVR, I think a lot of centers are applying this therapy to patients who are high risk uh, for surgery. Uh, this now is extending to potentially intermediate low risk patients. And I think as we start to get into maybe even some of the low risk trials that are ongoing, whether this therapy can apply and looking at the data is, is going to be what we'll be seeing uh, within the next couple of months to, to, to years. Who is the right patient? I would say right now, definitely looking at it in the high-risk patient population, uh, patients who don't have aortopathies and whether this can be applied to that, uh, that patient uh, cohort. Uh, where this therapy is being applied currently is, you know, we're looking at it in, in cases where there, you know, there are uh, maybe our type 1 bicuspids, which is probably the most prominent uh, type of bicuspid uh, pathology that we're seeing. Uh, but now we're seeing to start to apply it to type 0 and type 2 bicuspids as well. Interesting. Great. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for joining us today. And thanks to all of you for joining us here live from Sky 2018.